I want to know of the essential businesses, which ones are more essential during the lockdown? Wow, this does okay. sound like a trap. <laughs> Welcome to Unscripted with Kirby Hossaman and Bill Petrie. In this weekly podcast, Kirby and Bill talk about the world of marketing, branding, and promotional products. Unscripted is available only at promocorner.com, the leader in digital marketing for the promotional products industry. Now, here's Kirby and Bill. And welcome to episode number 199 of Unscripted. I am your co-host, Bill Petrie. With me is the captain of the quarantine, the sergeant of safer at home, the one and only Kirby Hossaman. Kirby, how the hell are you today? You know what? I'm doing okay. I'm doing, um, I think anybody who says they're doing better than okay is probably fibbing a little bit, but I'm, I'm right. doing well. Always good to see you. And uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm ready for spring in Ohio. And by spring in Ohio, I mean warmer than 45. How are no, you? No, I get that. I'm doing good. We've had a little bit of a cold snap here in Nashville this week. So, um, uh, and I am wearing pants just to be very clear. <laughs> pants are in the house today. Nice. Uh, no, th- it's going well, you know, trying to c- close down the, the, the old, what's going to be the old promo corner South office and finish my move here, which should be done in the next week or so. And so just looking forward to that, but you know what else I look forward to Kirby? What's that bill? With that platinum level transition, I look forward to talking about our friends over at Common Skew. That's right. We love them. We really love them. A lot of people like them. We love them. Love them deeply. Yes. And you know why? It's because they, uh, Common Skew is designed and built by distributors. For who, Kirby? For distributors. That's right. We didn't even rehearse that, folks. <laughs> that, that wasn't scripted at all. <laughs> So that means they understand the promotional products industry and the challenges the modern distributor faces. And and there's a million things we could talk about. I just want to talk about how easy it is to manage customer relationships within their ecosystem. You can capture all your client information, interactions in one place, not two, not four, not 27, one place. You can stay on top of every detail of the sales cycle by creating notes, setting reminders, statusing leads, and using tags. And I know that really helps you and your team stay connected internally. Kirby, you know what's going on with every sales opportunity within the uh, Hossman marketing uh, and environment yeah. enterprise situation universe <laughs> situation <laughs> yeah no absolutely we um, you mm-hmm. know I think we've talked about this before I think um, managing uh, tasks and all that sort of thing I, I was a little yeah. slow to utilize in common skew it was a tool uh-huh. that was in front of me that I wasn't utilizing and for me my business and my personal sales became more efficient when I started to the other thing in there is it, again in utilizing the tool. So one of my favorite places is the sales target report. If you go through your customers, kind of hit a, uh, a number that you're going to try and hit with each customer. Yeah. It's a great place for me at least to go and go, Oh, you know what? I haven't contacted. I say I'm going to do $50,000 for that client, but I haven't talked to him since February. That's a problem. Right. And so it's a great place to kind of get you going and get your back yeah. on track. Yeah, it truly helps you manage that customer relationship, which is what a CRM tool is exactly built and supposed to do. Exactly. So from ideation to invoicing, CommonSkew is going to help keep your team connected at all stages of your workflow. Learn more at commonskew.com. Kirby, will they be sorry that they did? Will they be apologetic in any way that they did? <laughs> they will not be sorry. I didn't think so, Kirby. So thank you for knowing that. So we are at episode number 199, which kind of blows Kirby and I away. (laughs) Um, So Kirby, I want to thank you again for having the courage to do this uh, podcast with me today. Why don't you start us off with a topic? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, social media is a great place to, uh, I don't know, keep up, catch up, all that sort of thing. It's also a great place where people, I think, um, often are lemmings, you know, somebody does something and copy and paste this and do this. And, and uh, generally speaking, those drive me a little crazy. Um, But the new one that I feel like is a quarantine special is like this year's, Hey, post your senior picture. Yep. Um, And I've gotten kind of a kick out of that. Um, Now I actually didn't do it. My wife, unbeknownst to me, posted my senior pictures. So thanks for that and the mullet pictures, Amy. Um, but uh, A, I was curious, obviously I saw your fantastic senior picture, amazing. And- yeah, um, Special. But, so I'll give you sort of a really quick take on that and I'll, yep. I would love to hear yours. Number sure. one, I think it's been fun, but the take of it is I've looked at so many senior pictures and I think 
many of us look back to high school or those younger days with sort of a longing and a gosh, don't, you know, didn't I look great back then? Mm -hmm. I want to give a newsflash to everyone. Mm -hmm. You all look better now. Yeah. No, (laughs) it is amazing how ridiculous we looked. Yeah, I um, I put mine up there, and I'm wearing a, a white shirt, a maroon tie, and a gray tweedish jacket. Killing it. And then there was a guy I graduated high school with, and my graduating class was like 1,390 people. So I didn't know a lot of people, even though I'd lived there for 10 years in Plano, Texas. He had the same outfit, like literally <laughs> same outfit, and 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 I didn't know him. I yeah. and I didn't know him in high school. So funny stuff. I think what's interesting is we the the movement for that is let's celebrate our the seniors who can't you know walk and graduate and do all the things that they're <laughs> supposed to do. I'm like, um, are we kind of celebrating ourselves? Right now? <laughs> Because it feels that way. Um, yeah, because, because there's nothing that uh, 17 and 18 year olds want more than to see pictures of us 20, well, 25 I, years ago. And, and a lot of kids that age don't even use Facebook. Yeah. I mean, they're not, my kids aren't on Facebook. Mitch is, but he never uses it. They're right. more on Instagram, both their regular account and the secret account they don't think I know about, um, and Snapchat and things <laughs> the like that. Instagram. So, yeah. <laughs> so I, I think it's interesting. Uh, Sorry, uh, Shelby's about to get fed right now, so you're going to hear her in the background a little bit. Um, but yeah, it's just interesting to listen to, uh, or sorry, interesting to see all the senior pictures. Um, it was fun. I mean, like, okay, I'll throw mine up there. I've got no problem with that. Yeah, no, and, and I think most of us have done it with a sense of humor. Like for me, I didn't do it, um, but yeah. then my wife did, and you know. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn. Take. A, I'm gonna turn the blinker. We're going to take a left-hand turn. All right, cha-cha. Okay. We are going to talk about, um, I don't know if you saw this, ASI reported, ASI, the Advertising Specialty Institute, they do such a great job in our industry. Distributor sales dropped 4.9% in Q1. Now, when I look at that number, that's really just March, in my opinion. Yeah. I would assume January and February were either st- static or maybe even a little up. And then, obviously, March, just everything went to hell in a handbasket in 30 right. days, as, as we all know. What is Q2 going to look like? And if you're going to have, assume, you know, we're all sheltering in place in April, most likely for a good part of May, if not into June. So what is Q2 going to look like in your opinion? And maybe a better way to look at this, Kirby, what are you forecasting for, for your organization or have you forecasted yet? Yeah, um, I haven't done a lot of forecasting, but here's, a, in, a, in a word, disaster town. Uh, yeah. Q2 is going to look, I, I was actually really surprised when I saw that number at 4.9%. And then I did the mental uh, journey Same that thing you I did. just did. Yeah. Where <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, that's so just what March. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, so we were, uh, uh, what I read is we were probably substantially up in mm-hmm. January, February. Yeah. And then because I think 4.9% is super generous. Uh, um, yeah. I, I thought, whoa, okay. That's not as horrible as I thought. And then I did, oh, wait a minute. I didn't, oh yeah. The other 60 days of the month. Well, and again, I think you're seeing that with the overall economy. I actually just read something mm-hmm. this morning where it said that the economy was down a number that I thought, oh, eight, like retail sales, I think. Yeah. It was down like eight or 9%. I was like, well, that's not bad. Well, yeah. but you realize that grocery sales are up 27%. Well, yeah. Right? But then you, you look at clothing sales are down 50%. And this and is liquor down, sales are up 22%. Right, so. right. Yeah, so so it's, a, it's an overall thing. I would say... Um, Q2, back to your question, I mean, April, yeah. at least for us, and again, uh, for Imprint has, has said an 80% decrease in sales. Yeah. Um, my, I mean, I think the, my hope is Q2 yeah. is all that it is, right? Um, so that would be April, May, June. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I, my guess is by June, we'll start to see things yeah. tick back up. But, um, and when I say tick back up, I just mean start yeah. to get closer yeah. to- to normal, not uh, growth. But yeah, I think April and May are going to be scary numbers. Yeah, I I think it's going to be the entire, no, don't be. I think that's accurate. I think the whole year is going to be some semblance of if we can tread water, Oh yeah, we're doing okay. And, and so I think that's what you're going to see quite a bit of. So I just wanted to get your take on that. I don't want to be Debbie Downer or, sure. or Billy Bummer or any other alliteration I can use that will <laughs> pop into my mind during this 
uh, you know, Sammy sad. I don't want to be that guy. Um, <laughs> but I do think it's important we talk about that stuff, Curb. Well, but because I, it's, I, it's, it's what it is. It's reality. Yeah, it's 100% reality. But I think, the, you know, the, the way to uh, sort of couch the, you know, mm. as you said, it's reality. To ignore it would be ignorant. But yeah. I think that what I always kind of default to is go, okay, this is, this is what I'm looking at. So what, yeah. how do I make changes to live in this new world? And yeah. I think that the smart distributors, I'm not throwing myself into that, but I think that the distributors and suppliers who are kind of looking around going, okay, how can I add more value to clients? How can I change my offering? How can I, yeah. in this time, I mean, that, those are the discussions that we're having yeah. internally. No, I, I think that's it. the only way to survive. I think it is too. I think it is too. All right, Kirby, what do you got? Um, I'm going to go with, so, so you know this just because we're buddies and we actually do talk outside of the unscripted podcast. We right? do. Um, so one of the things that we've done, um, I'm working every day, probably you know, <clears throat> six days a week here in my home office. Mm -hmm. And then we have a building that yes, you do. Uh, Amy has headed up that whole project. And so during this time for the last two weeks in the afternoons i've sort of uh, yeah. gone to the building to try and do some extra work and it this was one of those things where amy and i were having a conversation going you know what we'd like to do is come out of the this quarantine time mm -hmm. and have people go wow you made a huge impact on the building during that time because all of a sudden i'm like well i'll throw my time at it the right. girls have actually done quite a bit of work too um so I'm curious to know, or um, and maybe this is a question for the audience too, is like, what are the things that we could do within our business where we could do the same thing, where we, where we throw ourselves at something, yeah. but we come out on the other side and go, well, that looks different than it did before. Yeah. Well, um, I, 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 on my side, I mean, and I think pop people are probably seeing this, you know, we've really kind of decided to double down on a lot of live content. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, I've made the joke. I've been on a lot of things this week and I've made the joke probably several times, but I'll make it again. It takes a lot of work to look as unprepared as I am on these things. <laughs> and, and cause I actually do prepare. Yes. Um, I prepare to look unprepared, you know, to, and, and so um, we've really doubled down on live content for a variety of reasons. One, um, people have time now, right? It's the same reason I know you're doing a lot more content yep. too. I think it's a welcome distraction, you know, whether it's you and I having a, a Danny Rosen or a John Norris or, or a Paul Bellantone or whomever for a guest on a night, uh, you know, a bar, uh, you know, a, a happy, happy hour unscripted, mm -hmm. whether it's Jason Noakes and David Schultz and I talking about music, something just completely way outside anything in our business. Yeah. Or if it's uh, creating education, which I know you're kicking off that we're recording this on Thursday, the 16th of April. And we're, you know, I, I created this thing called uh, the essential quick bites or knowledge quick bites. I can't remember the exact name I came up with. Um, but it's based on, hey, when you go to like Chili's, you get the express lunch during the business day, it's 15 minutes. I wanted to create something where there's just 15 to 20 minutes of bite sized consumable education that people can actually use and hopefully implement in their business today and right now. Um, you're doing the first one, Roger Burnett's going to do one. And we've got a whole, whole group of people of doing that. And I, and I'm hoping at the end of this, we look back and say, we've shifted the landscape of how content is driven in the industry. Mm -hmm. Um, I, and, and that's, I've been stuck on the blog for so long. I will, and it's probably cause I love to write, right? We yeah. all gravitate towards what we do. Um, I do love the podcast. I think I have a, you know, it's one of those things you don't realize you have a natural talent for until you just kind of do stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I'm hoping that when we look back, we, we realize, hey, we made some positive impact, uh, hopefully educated some people, entertained them, maybe distracted them a little bit. Um, but that's kind of what I'm hoping. Yeah, no, and I think that's a that's a fair point. I think for us, um, we're doing kind of the same thing. We have doubled down. That was my, and again, it's like, sometimes it's like, okay, I'm just going to lean into what yeah. we do and do well. Yeah. Not, especially if it translates into what adds value already. Right. Right. Like if no we question. like, like, and, and sort of with this unscripted thing, you know, we're going to do it one more time because I've been pleasantly surprised. You yeah. and I talked about this. How many people have reached out to us and just said, man, thanks for kind yeah. of doing that. Um, well, and that's, that's super cool. It is. And, and honestly, it hopefully it provides a distraction and, and hopefully there's value to it too, more yeah. than just, oh, that's a distraction and something to do. Yeah. 
So, but so, I think what you're doing with the building is great. And, and, I, and that's more of a tangible thing. You're going to be able right. to see, you're going to be able to touch and feel. So I'm very interested to see what that looks like at the end of all of this. Yeah. And again, I think, you know, we, we, you and I've talked about it. We've done a five day marketing course. We've done, we've yep. leaned in on the hospital Absolutely. marketing side, because I think that the companies who don't stick their head in the sand during this time and right. whatever that is, right? Like right. whatever that is. Uh, well, the other thing that we did is, and you know this, but Ohio's heart. Um, which is a website I launched a year or so ago that hasn't gotten any attention. It's just a website right. about creating positivity. I've done three or four articles for that. And, and mm -hmm. it was so funny. I joked that the Google analytics on that site yeah. looked like the unemployment chart. It was yeah. just like here and then. Wow. Well, that's great. Because, yeah. So you just don't know when you try those things. You, you said like, hey, you don't know sometimes what talent you have until you yep. try stuff. Well, yep. that's the reason to try stuff. And now's uh, a great time to do it. And really what you're talking about here is what legacy are you going to leave behind when virus time's over? Yeah, I like so that. So I really think, that, I mean, if I can put a pretty bow on your question, really, what legacy are you leaving it, it, after this is kind of starts get back to whatever the new normal is? Yeah. Are you going to be like, I just kind of hid and didn't do anything? Or did you try something new? Because not everything we're going to try works. Of course. You know, and, and I'm okay with that. Yeah, uh, I think I'm it's okay important with, to be okay with that. <laughs> uh, absolutely. It's very important. To <laughs> All right, Kirby, okay. how about another one? Okay. So I don't know if you saw this. This kind of just it took me off guard going back to our industry. Uh, Kanata Blanket Neat Feet. So they were acquired by Pro Tiles a few years ago. Yeah. And so they're part of the Pro Tiles family. Well, they were sold by Pro Tiles this week to, uh, they are they're acquired. Uh, so Kanata Blanket and Neat Feet was acquired by Big Time Jersey. Never heard of them, but they're a supplier. Hmm. Big time Jersey from ProTile. So I thought that was a super, super interesting uh, timing to, to be sure. Um, but uh, I didn't see that coming at all. Right. Well, I didn't see it coming. I, honestly, I, not only did I see it coming, I didn't see that it happened. Uh, so, <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it, you don't see a lot of that. You see like entire organizations being acquired, but pieces of it outside I don't see that very often, right? Is right. That fairly unusual. Right. And uh, but and when they they came together, so it was Kanata and Neat Feet, right? Yep. Okay. Because when when they when Pro Towels bought Kanata, I was like, yeah, okay, I get that. Blankets, towels, all that sort of thing. Yeah. And and the Neat Feet, you go, well, okay, towels and beach wear. Wear. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, but yeah, I could see where it would also lift out. So uh, yeah, I'll be curious to hear how that goes. And in big time Jersey, is that what you said? Uh, big time Jersey. All right. So I do listen. Yeah, um, you do oh, cool. occasionally. So good luck. <laughs> good luck to that. Uh, it's just, I thought it was interesting, interesting timing and, and I don't know, just industry news. And I clearly don't have a lot to talk about. So no, it's all good. Well, let me go then. Yes, um, please go. Yeah. So one of the things that I think we've done a good job of on social media and, uh, you know, on podcasts like this is we've talked a great deal about the things that we're not excited about, <laughs> about living in quarantine, right? right. We, we've done a great job. So I thought it might be interesting to talk about some of the things that we did like, we have liked, some things yeah. that have been kind of good, right? Okay. Um, and so I have one that I'll get us started with, and then maybe we can vamp a little bit. Is okay. okay, let's, uh, let's right. do it. So one of the as, things- As they say in the old call-in radio shows, it's your dime, your dance floor. <laughs> I love it. Call us at 1-800-UNSCRIPTED. <laughs> that would be so great. Um, as a side note, when I'm listening to um, talk shows and they take calls from people, I hate that. I yeah. didn't tune in to listen to Jerry from New Jersey. I want to listen to the guy that, that actually runs the show. But I'm that's from Bur Virginia Breeds, Virginia, you're on the air. Yeah. Um, so one of the things that I've really liked, one of the yeah. positives is musicians – Mm -hmm. playing live on Facebook live yep. and on stuff like that, yep. recording music. Um, I know David Schultz and, and one of his buddies has recorded a couple that's not been live, but recorded, but even some local musicians here in our area have done like extended, like concert Facebook live stuff with acoustic. Yeah. I've loved that. Like that's been like, I've actually been working around the office and I'll put that on and just let them play. Yeah. That's a big positive to me that I've really, really enjoyed through this. Yeah, I, I would have to agree. I'm a big music guy, as you know, um, and seeing a lot of artists I like do that. And, and, and some of the well-known artists 
some not so well known, like you right. said, some more local, some more regional, some more on the fringe. Um, BJ Barham from American Aquarium hosts something every Wednesday and Saturday night where, where if for a while what he was doing, he was doing uh, the uh, entire American Aquarium album front to back, which was kind of cool. Just him, him uh, and, and a guitar and just seeing the, the creativity uh, do that. I have my friend, uh, Glenn Templeton, who is a country music uh, singer of, of pretty good renown, especially in Texas. Um, he lives here in Nashville. And he does a, a live thing every Friday night, and, and I've enjoyed that. Uh, so that's one positive. I think another positive I've seen, Kirby, the, the uh, you know, again, you, you, you try to make lemonade when life gives you lemons, or I used to say, when life gives you lemons, ask for limes instead. Um, but I, the air is so much cleaner. Mm, that's the air is a lot cleaner these days. Um, LA is experiencing the least amount of pollution in the history of ever, probably <laughs> since, uh, since, uh, dinosaurs got stuck in the La Brea tar pits. <laughs> um, I, I think, I think another positive I've seen, it's, it's, we've really tried to, life moves very fast as Matthew Broderick, as Ferris Bueller would say, if you don't stop and look around once in a while, you know. So it's yeah. really forced us to make sure that, you know, with 17 year old twin boys and we've been running around ragged, we can't do that anymore. Right. We can't do the college visits that they wanted to do. They can't go hang out with the friends. Hell, they can't even work unless they're working at a grocery store. And we really can't let them do that just because Sandy's high risk with, with mm -hmm. her heart. Uh, mm -hmm. She's not that. Great point. So yeah. we want to keep that. So we've made it. So every Friday night, one of the kids picks what we're having for dinner and what activity we're doing. And I don't care what it is, you know, uh, and it's, they, they have a, a budget, you know, it's like a hundred dollar budget, but for dinner, but so get what you want. So Mitch last week, he's like, I want steak. I want really big, thick steaks. And I happened to go to the grocery store to find steaks. And I found actually bone in rib roast. I'm like, I'm getting two of those suckers. And I made like two and a half inches. I cut it. I butchered up made them like two inch thick steaks. And, you know, we played Monopoly and it was wonderful. We haven't done that in far too long. Yeah. Um, and I think that's a difference between boys and girls, definitely in, in growing up. But I, I, so little things like that have been positive. Um, you know, there's challenges too, though. You know, that's yeah, so what you, sure. you want to focus on the positive. I'm focusing on positives. Yeah. Plus my, uh, my gas, my, my, the amount of money I spent on gasoline has gone way down, Kirby. Way yeah, down. no, that's fair. I, it, one of the, so the two other ones that I just had, and they kind of relate to what you just said, we are cooking at home more often. Yeah. Um, and the, my girls are pitching in. Um, not only, so mm -hmm. they've come and helped at the building. They're doing yeah. some major, like I'm sore. It's major yeah. manual labor down there, yeah. tearing out carpet and painting oh, yeah. and all this stuff. And they've jumped in. And let me just tell you, an, a, a, an esthetician and a performer on a cruise ship, yeah. they're not super pumped about it, but they no. are doing it because that's what you do in, in times of crisis. So. No. And look, ding and dong are clean, cleaning the house, <laughs> you know, every, every uh, day. Uh, there's okay. Today's bathroom day. Clean the house. <laughs> Please uh, get them a T-shirt that says "Dig and Dong." <laughs> oh, I've got all sorts of nicknames for them: Dig and Dong, Pete and Repeat. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's uh, good. But yeah, but they'll they'll do some cleaning and things like that. And but Friday night, and and you know how much I love to cook. So yes, I love to cook. Um, so Drew has till noon today on Thursday to tell me what he wants. Um, nice. And I think That's he's cool. gonna pick. I think he's gonna pick pizza, which I want to grill. Oh, nice. Okay, cool. All right. You want me to go with one more? We can, if it's quick. Yeah. Um, yeah, we'll do one more. Uh, and we'll then go, go with, the promo personal week. I love it. Okay. So this is just interesting to me. So there's a study on LinkedIn that said that Americans are good at staying home, question mark, that they essentially Americans have, have complied with social distancing and stay at home orders so that the projections for coronavirus have fallen from 2 million to like 70,000 or something like that. Yep. According to the CDC, 90% of citizens are following yep. the directions. I, saw that. I thought that was interesting because all I hear about are the people who aren't. Yep. And I think that is absolutely indicative of just our nature, right? That we, um, we, we notice the 10% who are being asshats. Mm -hmm. We don't realize that 90% of the people are doing what they're supposed to do. And so I think that's interesting. So I'm going to take a little different approach here. Sure. I think this is... Um, 
again, at some point, and I always pinpoint the early 80s when the news media ceased being a public trust and became a show based on ratings. Yeah. Uh, and if it bleeds, it leads, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. And we like to watch the negative stuff as a yeah. society. Maybe not you, maybe not me, but as a society, we want to hear about the negative stuff. 100%. I've, sure. seen, I've seen the same thing. Here's where I'll kind of twist it a little bit. I think we're all very good for the most part at staying at home. I do. I think the challenge becomes because we're inherently a nomadic society. That's what mm -hmm. Americans are. We like, we, we like our freedom and we don't yep. like our freedom being taken away from us. I think what's going to become challenging because your state is doing it differently than my state that's yes. doing it differently than Colorado that's doing it differently yeah. than Vermont that's doing it differently than New York and so on and so forth. If there was a nationwide lockdown where it was, we need everybody shelter in place until June 1st. And we think by then, if everybody's done that, we may have gotten in front of this thing and we're going to be able to reopen the country in, in measured steps. I think we could all get behind that. Mm -hmm. I think what the challenge is right now, it's open-ended. It's, it's a rolling two weeks. Yeah. And, and we'll reevaluate. And then in two weeks later, it's another two weeks you got to stay at home. At some point, I feel like there's going to be a revolt. Oh, I think it's coming soon. Uh, I do too. And, yeah, and, and it's from me. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, well, because, and, and, and to your point, there's no, there's no such thing as a no peeing section in the pool. No. And that's exactly how I feel about what's been done here. So, yeah, yeah I, I mean, in Ohio, it's, we've been ahead of it. Yeah. And, like, it's looking good. And so there's going to be a point at which people in our community that starts to go, mm-mm. -mm, we're going to work. And uh, in, in, in parts of Tennessee, <laughs> in parts of Tennessee are good. And then parts of them, it's, it's, it's rural and they're like, we don't have any cases. You can't tell me to stay at home. I'm going to go do what I do. Yeah. And so it's tough. All right. Cool. Good stuff. Kirby, we are now at the time where we uh, present our promo person of the week. This week it is you. Who is the one person or maybe two or seven people that is uh, really getting your attention in the industry? Yeah, and making so, you take notice. So we talked about this earlier that I think it's important to step out of your comfort zone mm -hmm. yep. and try some new things. I think yep. during this uh, quarantine time, during this crisis, one person has really popped, uh, at least across my social media, Walter Kurt. Mm -hmm. uh, Walter has uh, started an interview uh, video series that he's doing on a regular basis. He was I'm honored he interviewed me, but he's, he, has, he wasn't doing that before. And he embraced the technology. I don't think that's something that, and I'm not talking out of school. I just don't think that's something that he is. He was super comfortable with before. Right. He decided to um, not only step out there and, and do that in a way that hopefully provides value, but he's reached out to all of his contacts. And so he's created content and yep. I think more people should do what Walter has done. So kudos, Walter Kurt. Yeah, definitely stepped outside his comfort zone. And I've seen, uh, I think he's done it for almost two and a half weeks now, maybe three least, weeks yeah. every weekday, something like that. Yeah, and, and I know, I know he was a little um, uh, uncomfortable with the technology at first. I think Charity Gibson is the one who kind of helped him out, kind of set that up for him. And yeah, I think she was his first one or something like that. Yeah. I but think so. And, and, you know, he's asking some, some, you know, pretty, pretty difficult questions of people in terms of, you know, let's get some honesty out there. And I, I like what he's doing quite yeah. a bit. And, and I think anybody, should do things like that again uh, when was the last time you did something for the first time yeah and, and when 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 i saw walter doing that i was like man good on him yeah good on him so great choice kirby absolutely yes. great choice all right all right kirby we're now at dealer's choice <laughs> <laughs> and i worked i thought long and hard about this i feel like i feel like maybe i've wronged you in the podcast oh. before I okay. feel like maybe I've said that there's no wrong answers, but maybe there's like a bear trap in, in, a, in a rapid you fire that? or something. Like that. I, I, I'm, <laughs> I haven't necessarily noticed it. I'm just wondering if that's happened. So oh, probably not. What we're going to do is we're going to focus on, <laughs> on the current situation. And, and so every state's on lockdown on some variety of other. So there's businesses that are essential mm -hmm. and there's businesses that are not essential. I want to know of the essential businesses, which ones are more essential during the lockdown? Wow. This does okay. sound like a trap. <laughs> no, no, not at all. No, 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 no. I very, I carefully cultivated this, thought about it long and hard. And so what I'm going to do, Kirby, is I'm going to give you two choices. Yes. All you have to do is pick one. Honestly, there really isn't a wrong answer here. 
it's awesome. really more of a public service. At this so point. like two weeks ago, I said that, that it was, it should have been called let's make everyone mad at Kirby. So you've doubled down. I dig that. No, That's cool. No, 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 no. How, how dare you? All right. <laughs> Kirby, which business is more essential during the lockdown? Auto supplies or auto repair? Um, auto supplies. Banking services or child care facilities? Banking services. Veterinary services or food processing? I'm going to go food processing. So you hate animals. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> Gas station or truck stop? <laughs> oh, man. Um, yeah, okay. This is such a trap. So I'm going to go not. gas station because it matters to me. No, I think Truckers that's the right answer. Awesome. <laughs> There's no wrong answer. I think that's the right answer, though. Um, a pharmacy or convenience store, Kirby? Oh, pharmacy. Hardware store or gardening center? Hardware store. Laundromat or pet store? Laundromat. People are more important than pets. How about that? You want office me to say something? Office supply stores or accountants? <laughs> um, I'm going to go accountants. Okay. Restaurants providing carryout or restaurants providing food delivery? Uh, food delivery. United States Postal Service or other logistics companies such as UPS, FedEx? <laughs> um, I'm going to go USPS. Okay. Last one, Kirby. You're doing great. I don't feel like I'm doing great. Grocery store or liquor store? Grocery store. Okay, Kirby, I... Grocery I stores know. sell liquor in, in Coshocton, so... Okay, well... No, okay. <laughs> Okay, so you see, you got me on that one. I finally got got. There you go. So does that make you happy, Kirby? It makes me a little happy. I've right, made you know, everybody mad about the pets comment, so we're, we're, we're even. Well, you know what nobody's ever going to be mad about? What's that, Phil? They'd bad be signing up with our good pals over at Common Skew. We talked earlier about how it's a platform built for distributors by distributors. Yes. And so they really understand the challenges a modern distributor faces. We talked about how you can really manage your customer relationships earlier, capture all that client information, interactions in one place. You stay on top of every detail of the sales cycle, and it's really going to help drive your business forward. So if you'd like to learn more, head over to commonskew.com. You're not going to be sorry you did. Kirby, this is me throwing our notes. I'm done with this podcast for the day. Kirby, as always, I've enjoyed episode 199. Let's see what we do next week for 200. Thank you for listening to Unscripted with Kirby Hossaman and Bill Petrie. Unscripted is available every Friday at promocorner.com, the leader in digital marketing for the promotional products industry.